Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'll be running you through my current favorite method for dyeing alpaca fiber meant for doll wigs. I've been doing a lot of experimentation since I inherited literal tons of it from my great uncle. So this fiber has been soaking in room temperature water for about an hour. You can see most of the air is gone. There aren't many bubbles when I squish it, which means it's absorbed as much water as it can. To dye this fiber, I'll be using a few things from around the kitchen. I've got a set of metal measuring spoons, fork, and the fiber is in a glass container that has a lid, which is super important for this project. I've also got my RIT fabric dye for natural fibers and a jug of vinegar. It's important to use liquid dye for this. So the first thing to do is prepare the dye. I want the fiber to stay super wet so I'll move it out of the water without squeezing out any moisture. It needs to be soaked. You'll want to use enough water to completely cover your fiber. Next, I add some vinegar to the water. I originally started with a much higher quantity of vinegar to try to accelerate the dye process, but it just made the fiber feel dry. Now I use about a quarter of a cup of vinegar to each two cups of water. There's just under three cups of water here, so I'll use a third of a cup. This may still be more than what's necessary, but it's working well for me right now. Then I add the dye. Oops, that was not shaken well enough. No pigment. Let's try that again. The only real reason to measure your dye bath ingredients now is to ensure you can make exactly the same mix if you need more of a particular color later on. One big hang up for me is how long it can take to dye the fiber for wigs using popular methods. Fortunately, I was able to speed things up. I stir in the dye, and now the bath is ready, so the wet fiber goes back in. I use the fork to press the fiber down so it's all completely submerged in the dye bath. Then the lid goes on, and this whole thing goes into the microwave for 4 minutes. You want the water temperature to be almost boiling. The more water you use, the longer it'll need to be in. For a container this size, 4 minutes is about perfect. It's important to use glass, because a plastic container will absorb the dye and be ruined. The M is for microwave, in case you were wondering. My daughter's learning to write, and has been labeling everything in the house with its first letter. It's really cute. After 4 minutes, we'll take out that fiber, Rinse off some excess dye just so I don't drip it anywhere. And scoop the wet fiber out of the dye bath, making sure not to stir it around. The heat can cause the fiber to felt if it rubs against itself, and we definitely don't want that. You also don't want to shock the fiber by going straight from hot to cold, which could also cause problems. That's why we rinse the fiber with room temperature water. Don't try to rub or scrub the excess dye out of the fiber. Just let the water pour straight through it, until it starts coming out clear. You can squeeze, but only compress to remove liquid. Don't rub the fiber against itself or it'll mat up. You might want to use gloves for this part. My hands are going to end up a little blue. Once the water runs clear, your fiber is done and ready to brush for wig making. Less than 10 minutes and I've got 2 ounces of beautifully dyed doll hair. One important thing to know about alpaca fiber, or any natural fiber really, is that the ends will almost always come out darker when dyed. This can happen with both fabric dye and human hair dyes. It's because the tips of the fiber are older and have been exposed to the elements longer, making them more porous. So if the color isn't even, don't worry, you didn't do anything wrong. The good news is it can give you a gorgeous natural ombre. But what if you want an unnatural ombre, huh? Here I've got some different locks I've already brushed out. If you're doing an ombre dye, it needs to be washed and brushed before you start. These bundles have been soaking in room temperature water for a while. This is important for getting a smooth ombre look. You want the locks to be saturated all the way through. It's okay if the tops of these stay dry, since they'll be staying the original color. Just like the last dye bath, I mix a bit of vinegar with water, but this time it goes in a glass measuring cup. Leave space at the top so it won't overflow as you add dye and fiber. 
and this time I make sure my die is well shaken. We don't add our fiber just yet, but this dye bath goes in the microwave too. We want this water to be boiling when it comes out. My microwave does 180 degrees Fahrenheit in 2 minutes, the perfect temperature for a good black tea. So 2 and a half should be right at the boiling point. All microwaves are different though, so make sure you test yours. Once it's hot, I dip the end of the wet lock into the dye bath. The lock being completely saturated means the dye will wick upward into the wet hair creating that smooth gradient we're looking for. It's important that you try to just dip up and down and not swish around and tangle your fiber. The only back and forth motion you use should be to very gently settle the fiber in the dye bath if it doesn't want to sink. Gradually pull the lock upward, dipping less of it each time to create darker colors at the ends. Then rinse in room temperature water when done. Isn't this pretty? It's a bold pink, but if you want pastels, just use less dye. RIT has tons of color charts available on their site if you want to mix specific colors. What's great is this can be used on any color of fiber. This is some fawn colored fiber left from a wig I made ages ago. Anytime you dye a fiber that isn't pure white, it's important to test a small piece to make sure you like the color before you immerse everything you've got. I do a strand test, and I like the warm peachy pink it gives me. So I go ahead and dip the rest of my wet fiber all at once. This way, it'll all match and be a uniform color. If you need to do multiple batches, just keep track of how long you immerse the fiber and how many dips it takes to get the color you want. A little swish like that can help ensure the middle is soaked through, but don't be too vigorous or your fiber will tangle. It's also important to make sure your dye stays hot so feel free to stop and reheat it if necessary. So cool, we can do basic one color ombres, but what if you want something fancier? Don't worry, that's easy too. I take one of the white and pink strands I did earlier and once again make sure the whole thing is wet all the way through. Then I dip the other end into some teal dye and dip it just the same way, overlapping the middle point to create a gradient between the two colors. This can actually be done with as many colors as you want, for a three-color ombre, for example, you'd grab the fiber by the ends to dip just the looped middle in the dye. Before you do any crazy color combos, though, make sure you know how the colors of dye will interact. I'm using teal and rose quartz dyes, which both have a lot of yellow tones in them. So instead of a pretty purplish gradient where the pink and teal meet, I get a muddy greenish tone instead. But that's why you do a test with a single strand to make sure you like something. And just for sake of covering as much as I can, here's some locks that are completely dry. You can see they're harder to get into the dye bath, and it's harder to get a smooth gradient. However, you can squeeze out the extra dye to help smooth it out. And using dry fiber can also give you a great dip dye look. So there we have it. Full immersion microwave dyed teal locks a two-tone ombre lock, a dry-dipped lock, and wet-dipped ombres in two colors. Last of all, I'll show you my favorite thing about this process. Since the vinegar makes this an acid dye, even though this is wet and freshly rinsed, this dye job is completely permanent and as close to color fast as you're going to get. Even pressing this bright pink wet fiber into a white paper towel, there's absolutely no color transfer, meaning there's no risk of staining your doll. And that's all for today. If this video was useful to you, drop me a comment below and let me know which parts you enjoyed most. Thanks for joining me again. See you next time. Bye.